Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report Live for the 30th of October, one day before the uh, not so hello day of Halloween, a horrifying day, actually, a day of human sacrifice. And uh, to talk about a number of different issues, we're going to bring on for a short period of time Dr. Truat, who's uh, been on the program over the years for many different issues. And we're going to talk about uh, uh, issues about the political situation right now, the manipulated weather that's going on. Uh, and uh, many other issues. Uh, it's hard to say who's going to benefit, but let's look at analysis. We've had uh, Stan Deo on and Professor McCanny, who's looked at the issues in terms of whether this storm is manipulated, and it's most definitely a uh, conglomeration of at least four or five storms. Because of the amount of storm surge, which is 13 feet, it's already causing devastating damage to New York City, uh, Philadelphia, Connecticut, New Jersey. Uh, and it go, goes through most of the states, or co- we call battleground states, that could determine the election and the electoral college of who gets elected. So, uh, just looking at it from a distance, although when there's low voter turnout and tends to favor Republicans, I would say, on balance, the momentum behind the, uh, the Romney campaign, and I just spoke to a Professor Corsi, he's actually traveling with the Romney campaign, is uh, somewhat stifled for a few days. Uh, by having this uh, storm over states like Ohio, uh, which is a state where uh, mismanagement by Obama has not helped increase the jobs as much as it should have. Uh, they should have been put through as... Uh, ah, we do have Dr. Professor... Uh, Dr. I say Professor. Dr. Ott, um, we have a whole bunch of issues to talk about. I want to start off with the issue about this... Uh, I call it the selection. We're given two different candidates. Obviously, we cannot have another term of Obama... Uh, Romney, though, is uh, still has some very large skeletons in his closet, none other than Mr. Dov Zockheim, Rabbi Dov Zockheim. Um, let's talk about the uh, storm first. The, you're, you're pretty knowledgeable, and when you look at this storm, it has all the markings of a manipulated superstorm designed to happen right at the specific opportune time to have some kind of fulcrum effect on the election. Uh, what do you think is going on, and which way do you think this storm will have an effect? Well, that's a, that's a huge topic, of course. First of all, uh, the evidence that it is a manipulated storm is, is, a, is absolutely overwhelming. Uh, I, I spoke to you earlier, and, and uh, on my radio show today, I just reviewed the, the complete total aspects of the 1977 United Nations Convention against the weather manipulation technologies that existed as early as the 60s and were being deployed by Russian Bolshevik scientists uh, in league with with israel okay right so yeah, yeah. there's uh, there's so much to this factor you know obama uh, the way i think it shapes up obama has been supported by the faction of the the synagogue of satan that uh, that i refer to as the communist faction these are the the people behind world communism this is this is uh, they, they've supported uh, obama as their golden boy wow. and the other faction is your yeah. your rabid Zionist faction. You know that's that's largely behind Romney. So why I see it's shaping up. You know the Crown family of Chicago uh, has basically thrown everything towards uh, Romney and and basically thrown Obama under the bus, Doctor Bill. Yeah, uh, I, I think so too. I think uh, I think that they. they what I heard from my sources is that the thing that finally ticked them off to the point where they couldn't trust Obama to be a good uh, uh, actor in the position of president is when he actually cut the XL pipeline. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I, with that. And I think what happened is the, the globalists, basically they want the price of oil because of the Middle Eastern disaster to reach about $150 a barrel. And in about a year and a half, it'll open up the XL pipeline and double-cross all the Arab states, which are collapsing because... What's really going on, and it's not in the Western news here, but it is in Europe, is there's a war, a proxy war going on for about five years between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. And when the uh, so-called Arab Spring happened, which was planned actually in New York City with the social networking organizations like Twitter, Facebook, etc., and Facebook, by the way, and uh, Zuckerberg, these people are just the face of Facebook. Facebook is the no such agency, NSA. It's not some smart young uh, tech guy. He's just being the face of Facebook. Right, right, exactly. So what they did is they planned the uh, Arab Spring, which is basically a Muslim caliphate, and these are all high-level Masons. Most people don't realize 
there's more Muslim Masons in the world than all other religions, including the Knights of Columbus in the Catholic Church, the high-level Baptists that are Masons, the high-level people that are belonging to Buddhist temples or whatever, that there's more Muslim Masons than any other group, religious group on earth. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Not surprising, but you're, you're right on point. And so right. it really goes back even deeper into that, and you look at who really controls Masonry, and it comes back to the, the biblical lineage of Esau, which is Edom, and and the big lie that, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, what the Re book of Revelation calls the synagogue of Satan has pawned off that they are the true Israel. And that's just not, not factual. They, if you really do your homework, you find them going through the Khazar nation of Eastern Europe, which is the descendants of Esau, which is Edom. They've adopt, you know, adopted the red color, the red star. They are the face of world communism. And then, of course, there's a subset of that, the rabid Zionists. And so yeah. that's who we're facing, Dr. Bill. That's ultimately the bottom line, rubber meets the road here. Uh, yeah, look at in this. fact, if you look at the viziers, which are the wizards of all the Middle East, of all the European kingdoms down through the Middle Ages, they were all from Saudi Arabia. They're all from viziers, and they're all from, I call it, e-Saudi Arabia. They're all from the same lineage, blood lineage, as the Khazars. Yep. The Khazars actually were the ones that had come down into the area of Saudi Arabia. They're the, they were from the Ural Mountains, but basically these are the Khazarians are actually the ancient people, the descendants of Esau. Esau, the house of Esau, right, absolutely. And that comes out in my research to the, to the, the lineage of Ishmael, reading the Bible, that, uh, that Esau took to wife one of the daughters of Ishmael, which, right. which again, is a... Uh, Another whole story in itself, but yeah, that's the house of Saud, which is Saudi Arabia. Which, which is why with the current, uh, what I call, Sabbatean, Satanistic Jewish leadership, and by the way, there are Torah Jews, which are a small minority, there are real, uh, we call Messianic believing Christians, but they're persecuted inside Israel. The leadership of Israel, I call it Rothschild land, is run in conjunction with the Saudi Arabians because many of the Saudi secret police are also Israeli Mossad and are linked directly to the CIA and, and MI5, MI6. So there's a British link, there's a U.S. CIA link, and there's a direct link between Israeli security forces and Mossad and Saudi Arabia. So this proxy war was going on, and this is really interesting news, that the Chinese, after the collapse last year of the Mubarak regime, they came in with a $200 billion investment they, they offered and building 115 uh, plants for building and bringing manufacturing back to uh, there. But the proviso was they had to realign with Iran and not with Saudi Arabia. So the Saudi Arabians are in panic. So they were recruiting at a cost of over $100,000 in many cases uh, mercenaries to come in and slaughter Syrian citizens, police, and to, uh, quote, overturn the regime of Syria because they know that they can't attack Iran directly. They have to go through their proxy of attacking Syria. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and so again, it goes back to, to um, the house of Saud and Mecca uh, being, again, a, a high Masonic controlled uh, secret society. I mean, the Cabal, the Cube, the Black Cube of Mecca, it's all the same. The, the Kaaba. Yeah, the yeah, Kaaba. The Kaaba. Yeah. Now, the, this kind of fits in also with some of the what I call the darker sides of apostasy. Remember some of the Old Testament prophets uh, talked about how God was saying, having a prophecy of showing some of the high priests that were literally in the temple and were and having ceremonies literally to the gods of the east, in other words, the rising yeah. sun, and they were apostate. We have uh, a real instance recently, and of course, I had uh, him on my program, Jonathan Kahn. And he talked about this book, The Harbinger. And uh, I did a lot of prayer after my wife, of course, discerned it earlier. But when we come back, we're going to get into this because we need to discern what's really happening and why we can't have another term of Obama. But as I say, the diagnosis is if you have Obama, it's like a heart attack and stroke. You'll be dead in the morning. With Romney, it's cancer. And with a lot of treatment, you might survive. But neither is great. Welcome back, and uh, we mentioned uh, about a, an experience I talked to you before the show today, uh, Dr. Truat. One of the things, and I'm going to give credit to my wife, Michelle, she often, and I tell the husbands, no matter how many gifts things you have, 
the wife is often, because you're a spiritual unit, God looks at the husband and wife as one. Although you're two different individuals, that's why the only sacred institution in the world is marriage. And you don't, by the way, have to be sealed for time and eternity in a Mormon temple to be married. You have to be married on a physical and a spiritual level. When God seals, he's sealing the two of you as one. And when the wife sometimes discerns things early, she may not know why she knows it, which is often very irritating to a very logical mind like mine, uh, but knows in advance. So she had a real negative feeling about Jonathan Kahn. And, of course, I uh, pursued Jonathan, got him on the show, had him on once, and then I got some, did some research and got some very negative, how can I say, visions, dreams, and concrete analysis uh, that this was not as it seemed to be. Uh, give us more input about Jonathan Kahn and the Harbinger and what you perceive, because I basically called it another what I would call an emotional catharsis rather than the spiritual transformation of a population into repentance. In other words, it didn't want to deal with real issues of why is America under judgment, how high is the corruption, and was 9-11 a self-inflicted wound uh, rather than the idea of so-called terrorism by, by Muslims. <clears throat> well, indeed, indeed, uh, Dr. Bill. I'm, I'm glad to hear your wife had that. She's right on. I, I uh, uh, ordered the book, read it from cover to cover, made uh, notes, and and obviously, uh, the the first things that, that, that jumped out is, you know, wait a minute. It's uh, it's clear from my research that it, all all signs point to Israel as being the the instigators of 9/11. So it's like, okay, here's an apologist. Rabbi Khan to me is an apologist, saying, look, you, you know, we had this this thing happen to New York because we're such a sinful nation, uh, paralleling it to the the trials of ancient Israel. Correct. And so, you know, he's not clearly not pointing the finger where the finger needs to be pointed to his right. uh, fellow rabbis who really are the instigators of this thing. Right. In fact, a, uh, you confronted him uh, about several questions you asked him. And I'd like you to repeat those questions and give, him, give his response to those questions. Well, on my blog, which is uh, www.atrue, A T R U E O T T, you can go in there and just, uh, in the search engine that comes up. Just uh, just to do the book review of the Harbinger. All these things are pointed out in my book review. Okay, for right. for, the, for the discerning Christian. But I, I I wanted to have him on the show initially, so I I made a uh, initial inquiry to him. Uh, I got him on the on the line and basically just wanted to ask him, as a he claims to be this born again Christian and a messianic rabbi, right? He wanted to convert his fellow Jews to the reality of Christ. That's his claim to fame. But right. then when, when, when probing him, he would never disallow nor uh, denigrate the Babylonian Talmud, which uh, I've read enough of it to know it's one of the most hateful, obscene books of, I don't call it writ, holy writ at all. To them it is. Yeah, but it, it makes the Quran, even the most nasty verses in the Quran, look like a ch children's garden, garden party. Specifically, my Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ. And it, decri it des describes him as being an imposter, and him and all of, all of his followers boiling in a in a pot of of a human excrement. Uh, to, Forever. You know, Forever. I mean, how can you possibly claim to be a messianic Jew and still hold to the tenets of the of the Talmud? I asked him, isn't that kind of uh, uh, being hypocritical? And then it got very nasty. I uh, started to, what I perceived to be curses to me in the Yiddish tongue, and, and, it, and then the, the conversation terminated. So, I mean, wow, it's a, there was no doubt there was a, a hidden agenda there. I see the likes of Jim Baker, and, and uh, uh, he's constantly promoting the Harbinger as, you know, the way, the new prophetic. Yeah, I know there's a lot of false, false Christians. Uh, what's going to happen is that there's going to be a silencing process, and it's starting now, and it's going to continue. And we, the ones that are actually seeking the voice of the Most High. Now, you're an ex-Mormon. Uh, most people know that I studied and read the books and so on. I was only in uh, studying for, for a period of four months. But I got my temple recommend. I got my, uh, they already tried to, to push me toward becoming a bishop. I was only in four months just kind of, I was curious. And that was back in 1988, before I had a supernatural experience. And I can tell you that Mormonism is, uh, is one of the most evil religions on earth and it's very deceptive i mean uh, you can look at the extreme elements of islam and you can see right off the top even though there's some quote very nice muslims obviously if you're it's an it's an enigma because you can't be a nice muslim because the quran calls for uh, 
for uh, jihad. So if you are, you aren't even a Muslim. <laughs> but high-level temple Mormons have to do a ceremony uh, before someone to play acts of Satan and says man must fall so we will, will, will know both good and evil. Uh, they, Salt Lake City Temple has a special, if you want to call it throne room, lined with gold for Cain and for Lucifer. I mean, people need to know that are almost about to be president. And again, i got to tell you, Obama's even worse. I mean, Obama, if we have another term of Obama, there won't be in America. But people need to understand, even though uh, a lot of Mormons are, quote, very conservative, it's very hard to get an abortion if you're Mormon, if you go at least legally through your stake bishop, because uh, I took care of 22,000 Mormons from 1980 to 1987. And I can tell you that the Mormons are very conservative, but they have some very evil things. I took care of temple workers at the Calgary Temple that uh, literally had emergency calls because they were suicidal, because they had partaken and had seen human ritual sacrifice in the temple. Now, people might say, that doesn't occur. You know, as an ex-Mormon, horrible things are happening in the Mormon church, and no one's told about it because of the highest levels. The church is very deceptive. They're still polygamous, at least spiritually. Uh, they still do all kinds of things that are hidden from the lower levels, just like high-level masonry. Right, and it's, it's really what I call celestial masonry. Joseph Smith, Brigham Young were all high-level master masons, okay? So you got to understand right. that that's the next level. It's, it's the ultimate, re, you know, the, the, the visions given to them are from the God Baal. And it goes back into exactly what Paul was telling uh, the Romans in his epistle to the Romans, uh, chapter 1, Dr. Bill, verse 23. Uh, it's, they're talking about uh, uh, what happened you know, in Rome and what's happening continuing to this day. Uh, verse 23, they changed the glory of the incorruptible God. Right. Meaning the, the actual true Christ into an image made like to corruptible men. In other words, they say that God is a, is a, is a glorified man that went through a, an earth type of life and existed to become exalted. So that's, that's the first big lie of Joseph Smith and Mormonism. Exactly. That they yeah. say it's just a corruptible man that's <laughs> God. And that's exactly what's happening. And, and you go on to Romans, again, down into uh, chapter 1 verse 28, and this is exactly what I wanted to focus on in the time we have left. He says that even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, and as they forget about God completely, they do. They've forgotten about uh, the true Christ. They've forgotten the works of grace. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. The definition of right. reprobate mind is just those people who, who love the lie and proceed to, to uh, tell us fiction uh, promote fiction is truth and it's just exactly what, what we're facing here in the controllers the council the druidic council as you call them bill yeah when, when we come back we'll continue and explain this because people need to understand what the choices are and it is a hobson's choice you die quickly with obama you die slower with romney but we're facing a horrifying election as we're Welcome back, and um, just to kind of kind of refocus on this uh, issue, uh, here's the structure of control of planet Earth on a spiritual and hyperdimensional level. You have Lucifer, is his title he likes to take, the light player. He's not bearing the true light of God. He's bearing the blue light of Lucifer, Satan, the the uh, the deceptive light. And underneath Lucifer, okay, and we're talking about Lucifer being not just over a little planet, a, a blue jewel. A sapphire around a yellow dwarf star. We're talking about a, a universe of 460 trillion galaxies. There's more galaxies in the universe than stars in our galaxy. And this evil transdimensional entity is very ancient, very powerful, uh, and very intelligent. And the human mind, uh, without the power of the Most High God, is is a minuscule uh, irritant to this super intelligence. And the reason why it's so focused on us is because it knows man's destiny, which we have a destiny through the actions of the sacrifice of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Father that inhabited flesh and came here to rescue us because we are his actual lineal children. Uh, and we have a destiny that's much greater than what we would assume. We are like in a larval state. What he has done is designated a council of 13. Uh, the one sitting in the 13th seat is called a pindar, which means 
The word Pindar is the same as the word Hollywood, which means the holly plant. Uh, the Pindar is a magic wand. That's why they talk about Hollywood. The Hollywood is actually to change the minds of people to modify the timeline of civilization. And the Pindar means the penis of the dragon. He's a dragon that runs over earth. And, of course, under them are the Mormon church, the Sabbatean Jews, the high-level Muslims that are Masons, the, the, uh, all of the other apostate uh, demonic religions that basically believe that man can be the arbiter of good and evil, the very original sin of the first chapters of Genesis. So the Mormon church basically believes in that idea. Good works, it believes you have to go be sealed for time and eternity in the temple. You have to do a whole lot of specific things to rise within the realms. But you have to understand that the Mormon church is a corporation. And uh, so is the United States of America. So is the Vatican. Uh, we have a world where things are not as they seem, and there's so much deception. Like, for example, if we have Romney, we have to understand that he has made alliances with the a blood oath with the Israelis to rebuild the temple. I want you to highlight that and explain that. Uh, that was a new revelation I hadn't heard before. You, you told me that today, uh, Dr. Truat. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I... I've uh, commented on this. Uh, I, I did a, a 2008 video presentation, PowerPoint presentation, entitled Mitt Romney the Demagogue. Okay, I, I showed the unholy alliances between him and the chief rabbis, uh, the Rothschild clan, and how he backed out of 2008 because he was told to bide his time. He was told to, uh, and this is again from very close insider information, the Romney campaign, to wait that he would be given his... Uh, his time in that in those last four years okay he's he's made uh, uh, strategic appearances at the Israeli Defense Force uh, IDF uh, summits I, I was contacted by a gentleman who uh, is now a whistleblower of the IDF and he says I'm, I'm here to tell you that Willard Mittens Romney has made blood oath I mean in writing with his blood to, to guarantee that, that he would rebuild the third temple at the Dome of the Rock area now in Jerusalem. Yes, so, so when, when he denies the Joseph Smith prophecy about the white horse, where a, when the U.S. Constitution is hanging by a thread, uh, that a Mormon will become the President of the United States. Now, I think it was also repeated, I think, in the 1870s by one of the Mormon prophets, as they called them. Um, I think it was Prophet Woodward, is that correct? Uh, yeah, made, it's, it's, yeah, it's been part of uh, Mormonism myth. Yeah, in other words, they can't dismiss it because there has been a lineage of even prophets that have referred back to this writing that was, you know, extant at the time of the death of Joseph Smith. Now, what's important is that in the past, people have always looked on Romney, even when he was going to school, as, quote, the chosen one. Uh, I mean, it was, yeah. always a, it was actually a joke, you know, the fact that they knew that there was something special about Mittens Romney. Willard, right? Interesting. You know, like the guy that ran to control the rats back in that movie about 30 years ago or so? Yeah, right, exactly. Willard and the rats? Well, uh, Willard is there, okay? So, you know, it may creep you out, but the fact is Obama is a thousand times even worse. This well, is you look, at the, look at who really controls uh, Romney, uh, even from his days at Harvard and, and all the way through is... It, 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 he sh this woman shadows him completely. Her name is Orit Gadish. Orit Gadish, the daughter of an IDF uh, Mossad general. Okay, you got uh, Orit Gadish, the, the CEO of Bain and Company, Bain Capital. Look at what, uh, uh, how yeah. Romney made his money through. I mean, really made his money through tobacco, uh, huge tobacco uh, promotions in Russia and America. I mean, it's an ultimate hypocrisy, Dr. Bill. Well, the thing is, most Mormons, and you know, having been a Mormon, and I took care of Mormons as a non-Mormon, that they're very conservative. And they don't smoke, they don't drink, they get fat, they have a lot of obesity, they have a lot of diabetes as a result. Uh, but they're pretty conservative. They're actually more conservative than most, quote, in quotes, Christians, or Jews, or other parts of the population. So... For someone to promote abortion in the past as a governor, for someone to promote in his business cigarettes or other activities, is very bizarre. It's really not even the standard within Mormonism, is it? No. Uh, in 1992, when when Mike Levitt, who's now the the transition team chief for Romney, Governor Michael Levitt fought tooth and nail to the incoming 
Democrat uh, woman named Jan Graham. Jan Graham uh, said that part, part of the platform of election is there needs to be a class action lawsuit against big tobacco. So here's uh, this ultra conservative, uber conservative Michael Levitt fighting the liberal Jan Graham, the Democrat, uh, against uh, fighting against the big tobacco. I mean, she, he fought tooth and nail to stop her from filing this class action lawsuit on behalf of, uh, of Utah and other states, which eventually was successful, of course, and it resulted in multi millions of dollars coming into Utah. And then Michael Okerlund Levitt fights her to, to get possession of the slush fund to use for his private pet projects. It's unbelievable. Truly yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it uh, is and, amazing. And, and so now we see Levitt, you know, heading the team, the transition team. And so I, I've been saying this since 2008. Willard Mittens Romney will be the next president, not by election, yeah, it, by C-election. By C-election. Now, here, here's how the situation is, and we'll show you how bad Obama is. Obama, Obama's even worse. Obama is, and of course, if you saw the documentary both by Dinesh D'Souza, which explains, as we call, his mental and spiritual fathers, and then his biological father in the Joel Gilbert documentary, and you check out the research yourself, you can see that Obama is a red diaper baby communist. <coughs> He's a 32nd <coughs> degree Mason. He was raised as a Muslim in schools in Indonesia. He still wears a ring with the Shahaba, the Islamic prayer on the ring that he used as a wedding ring after he had worn it even in university. The man has literally, he should have a demolition hat when he's going around uh, campaigning because he's not here to build up the middle class, he's here to destroy it. He's here to break up America so it becomes a brand on a wall of a new world order where the American Federal Reserve becomes the World Federal Reserve because when you have QE3 and again there's a there's a there's a, a cabal here going on between the banking community and Obama and the Rothschilds to try to print as much money so that they can capture the whole world by debt. Right now, the world, 87% of the dollars, both printed and non, non-printed electronic dollars, are in, in U.S. dollars. The things that have caused the most recent wars, like Libya, was Muammar Gaddafi decided he was going to raise a dinar and have a regional currency and buy and sell oil and other currencies other than the dollar, that's what got him killed. Because exactly. he was actually collaborating and cooperating with the West, with, uh, with the British Prime Minister at the time and others, but when he decided he was going to set up a dinar and regional, you know, their own banking system outside the Rothschilds and he was going to buy and sell oil in non-dollars, that's what got him killed. This is the reason why Syria, Iran, there's only three nations, by the way, I think it's three, three nations or four nations that have, don't have a Rothschild bank. I think it's Syria, Iran, Cuba, and I think North Korea. That's it. So it's not surprising they're in the crosshairs. Indeed. Plus, you know, look at uh, what Gaddafi did as far as his uh, plan to feed all of, all of the African, uh, nation, African nations. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. The breadbasket of the world. Couldn't have that either. So. Oh, no. Can't, can't have them uh, doing that kind of thing. Really, let's, let's get into that. Yeah. Welcome back, and we have uh, Tim Alexander on as well as Dr. Truat. Doc, Tim will be back in the third hour, and uh, we're going to also, um, Dr. Truat, people need to know this history. They need to know the history of, of things like you just mentioned before the break about the daughter of King Herod Agrippa. You know, of course, King Herod who also tried to kill all the children to get rid of the one who might be Messiah because he had known from the... the the, the prophecies that the Messiah was supposed to show up. You Indeed, know, you know, I, I've documented all of this in, in a series of papers. I need to put it in a book form and get it published, perhaps. It's simply called the Righteous Blood series. You go into my blog, just uh, Google up and you know, just search in the engine uh, the Righteous Blood series. You can see the whole thing from A to Z. What I've uncovered is, look, you know, when Titus and Roman legions came and sacked and sacked Jerusalem, 1.1 million. Uh, Jews at that time were killed. You look at who the bloodline of Herod and the scribes and Pharisees were. They were they were usurpers of the of the of the throne, basically by means of uh, deception. They were controlled the the treasury at uh, uh, Mount Sinai, Petra. Okay, that's they were massive massive treasuries of gold and silver. Rome uh, basically was funded by these. Treasurers and King Herod was a puppet king, but directly of the lines of Esau, 
Now, his daughter, uh, uh, Bernice, was actually became the wife of Titus, who became Roman emperor. And you see, from that liaison, the creation of the Vatican began. I mean, good heavens, uh, the Catholic Church saying they have their authority from Peter? Wait a minute, uh, the, the, <laughs> Peter, the apostle, was crucified upside down by, by these ancestors of, of uh, Esau, these right. descendants of Esau. And by the way, remember, you remember the Esau and Jacob, you know, talks about the red thread and so on, and, and the one that came exactly. up with Jacob. Yeah, and the so fact is that it, it, this goes right back to the prophecy in the Bible, the final battle between Esau and Jacob. It is. That's what it's really all about. So I call it the righteous blood. Uh, the thread, the red thread, as you call it, is the is the destruction and death that all the blood of the righteous righteous prophets and righteous men that have been sacrificed by this group is now coming to full full score, full bear. Now, now most people don't realize the most vile form of 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 if you want to call it sacrifice of the words of the prophets is to not listen or heed them. In other words, you don't have to actually put a knife to their throat, put a gun to their head, or kill them in any other way. The, the worst way is not to listen. As I, I gave a dissertation last week, and I talked about this with uh, Alexander Bachman, which we have a, up a link from a couple of days ago, that the sin of Cain, the sin of Cain, which of course you know is also part of the uh, of that special throne room for Cain and Satan in the in the Mormon Temple in Salt Lake City, the sin of Cain is real simple. Cain said, did not have a sufficient relationship with God, so he said, I will figure out myself what's righteous, what's good and evil, which is the whole basis of the Mormon church. It's the whole basis of Catholicism. We have to do so many dispensations and so many, you get mortal and venial sins, and you got to do certain things in order to kind of get out of trouble. Just like the, you know, I think it was a saying back during the Middle Ages that, you know, if you put money in the offering box, the souls would be, would leap out of purgatory. Well... Uh, let, let me give you a little background, because I, I grew up Catholic and, and right. studied Catholic theology at the graduate level uh, right. before I became Eastern Orthodox. Uh, in the Middle Ages, uh, the monasteries, very few of the monks were priests, and they developed the concept of, uh, of sin and indulgences and so forth. Right. And uh, if the peasants would come in and donate maybe a baby pig or, or, you know, some livestock, something that they had of value, which usually wasn't gold or silver, but right. something they had, then they would say a mass for grandma or daddy or, you know, uh, to get him out of purgatory. They developed the concept of purgatory. And... Um, so pretty soon they decided, well, we, uh, we're, this is a, a great money-making thing. So mm -hmm. they start ordaining many of the monks, uh, priests, and they start building side altars in the monastic uh, abbey churches. So it became, a, it became a, a business, in other words. Well, yeah, but, I mean, so was going from uh, the, the cathedral to cathedral to look at the relics. I mean, they had, uh, if you assembled all the relics of the true cross, it probably built a, you know, you'd probably get a couple hundred crosses out of it. Yeah. Uh, and it was, that was uh, the, the tourism and, uh, and scandal at the time. When the Protestant Reformation came about, the reason it was so successful is there had been so much corruption for so very long. That doesn't mean that the core message was wrong. It means that the people that were were uh, uh, putting a cloak of God on, um, in many cases, were unworthy. And I mean, you know, you see that. Yeah. In, in other Bible. words, uh, the, I guess uh, if you were to summarize, the, the Pope doesn't have to be a Christian for it to still be uh, a acceptable <laughs> faith, if you what you're saying. Well, you know, uh, after my <laughs> wife died, I, I had this Russian girlfriend, and we went to, we went to the Vatican. And we went, took the tour of the Vatican Museum. And at one point, I'm looking at this large picture, uh, probably late Middle Ages, of a pope on his throne, and he's surrounded with his cardinals with their special tall white miters on. And it's a very, very imperial uh, picture or, or portrait. And I said to her, of course, she was Orthodox, so, you know, she was, but, but I said, where is Christ in that picture, or where is Simon Peter in that picture? And many historians have spoke of the, the, the Vatican and the, the nucleus of the Catholic Church as the living corpse of the Roman Empire. And to yeah. some extent it was, and to some extent it was 
out of necessity because the church was the only transnational uh, organization uh, with the fall of Rome, and, and as Western Europe was plunged in the Dark Ages, the only way to communicate across the the political and military wilderness that yeah. was uh, Western Europe was the Catholic Church. So what, what, what's the what's the if you're boiling it right down, Tim? What was the, the primary thing you want to say about Catholicism and, of course, the modern era? Right now, we have, for example. Uh, the current Pope. I Benedict. think the Catholic Church is very corrupt. Right. And the the, the current, current Pope, Kevin Benedict, is, is, is uh, even among so called you know Catholics that really watch this, they're very concerned. They look at the behavior of Pope Benedict and, the, and over many, many years, long before he became Pope, and their idea of ecumenism is bizarre. I mean, it's the idea we can have ceremonies well, with mean, native I, shamans I, 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 and with I Buddhist. Uh, who, yeah. Uh, Dr. Bell, I knew a man who headed up a, a, a nationwide organization that that uh, tried to clean up the Catholic Church, uh, the pedophilia in it, and went after many of the bishops who who supported uh, uh, so much of the scandal and covered it up. And he went, and a group went, and they talked to Ratzinger when he was uh, the uh, uh, cardinal in charge. And uh, they said, well, he was, he was a big part of the problem because he wouldn't do anything. Uh, you, 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 you have to dig a little well, deeper. Well, that's, personally, uh, the majority yeah. of, of people that I have known that have gone to prison, sadly, have been Catholic priests. So, uh, Dr. Troy, what do you think? Uh, I, what I see is, and this, if, if, if Jesus was back now and he was making a statement, he would say, the judgment begins in my house. In other words, I think most of the public religions and the people, at least the higher-up structures, are apostate. Uh, they well, have it, it, got, goes, it goes it, back it, to, the, to, the, to the epistle of Paul to the Romans. I mean, that's what we talked about. They have reprobate minds, clearly. And, and, and I just want to mention on that, the early history of Brigham Young in early Mormonism is uh, they, they're joined with Roman Catholicism at the hip. It's amazing. The, the Jesuit general at the time uh, here in, in America, there was a there was constant weekly communications between Brigham Young and him, uh, and and the, the 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 Cathedral of the Madeline here in downtown Salt Lake City, uh, their their history uh, lessons show the 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 wonderful synergism they call it between Brigham Young uh, and the Mormon Church is is amazing. It goes clear back again to to the, some of the secrets of the Jesuit general himself. Uh, there in New York City, the very origins of Mormonism, the very origins of the the false nature of the Book of Mormon are all hidden in those uh, archives. You know, guys, th uh, about three blocks from my house is, uh, and I, I won't mention her name, it's, it's a fine old Evansville family, uh, 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 is a house. And the lady has a, uh, 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 was related to the Do uh, John Foster Dulles and, and, and all that. And one of her relatives was recently, uh, a few years ago, made a cardinal, Cardinal Dallas. And uh, his, uh, I think it was his uncle that was the head of the CIA, and another uncle was the U.S. Secretary of State. Thank you, Dr. Truat. We will be back in uh, just uh, an hour with Tim. Health and Wellness Hour coming up. Tim, uh, we'll have to continue this discussion in the third hour. All You've right. got some amazing stories. Thank you, Dr. Truat, for coming on and explaining... What are Hobson's choices? Again, <laughs> dead tomorrow with Obama, cancer with Romney. God Both of them. Yeah, you know, take later. care, everyone. Pray for America and the peace of the world because we're on a pathway of challenge to repent. Back in a moment.